This tree has the potential to revitalize the African landscape, provide locals with a sustainable income, and so, um, it isn't a tree, but more of that later. Well, you might already know its name, it's the Baobab, and you might also know that the Sahara is expanding, which ain't good. What you maybe don't know though, and here comes a bit of context so that we can then get back to the Baobabs, is that the mega project called the Great Green Wall of Africa, which was supposed to plant a lot of trees to stop further desertification of the African continent is in shambles, meaning the African states themselves don't really care about it and only about 2 out of the 20 are doing something of substance. And now we look at how the Baobab can help with that. So the Baobab exists even in the very dry and degraded parts of the continent and it does just fine there because the tree is exceptionally resilient. And here comes the crazy part. Part. It grows fruits which have tons of nutrients and even more use cases. Maybe I'm shouting too much, but I don't really care. Heck, people and other animals sometimes chew even on the bark of the tree and get moisture out of it. But back to the fruit. It has an oval-shaped hard shell that contains a dry, powdery pulp, seeds, and these fibers. The pulp, believe it or not, is a real superfood. It contains much more vitamin C than a lemon, much more calcium than milk and much more potassium than a banana. It's also supposed to have a lot of antioxidants. Now, the properties of the red fibers are also an area of interest. A part of them is soluble in water and when you then drink it, it's supposed to reduce the glycemic index of the food you eat, meaning it should be good for people who have diabetic problems. But keep in mind, this is no medical advice of any sort. This content serves just for entertainment purposes, so Please don't sue me. Then we have the seeds, which can be pressed to extract oil. Now, the oil isn't meant to be eaten since it has some carcinogenic properties when you eat it, but you can use it as a skincare product. The shell of the fruit can then, for example, be used as firewood. And now we are getting back to the bar. People carefully harvest it to not cause much damage, and then, for example, make these rocks out of the fiber in it. This whole process should be completely harmless to the tree, and they just grow the bark back like nothing happened. A normal tree would probably die though. Anyways, what's cool is that the baobab can live up to some two and a half thousand years. But what the locals don't find so cool anymore is that the tree takes some 8 to 23 years from germination before it grows its first fruit. Given these two facts, people weren't really focused on planting new baobabs in the past since they wouldn't have nothing from it for quite a few years. This all shall change though. There are baobab domestication efforts underway, which have already successfully brought the first fruiting of the tree down to two years from planting. This will give people a much bigger incentive to start planting them themselves, which will lead to baobab farms springing up all over Africa, and also in the area where the great green wall should be. This means that baobab farming could drive this wonderful green project, so the industry is sustainable and can provide these decent income even in the most rural areas you can think of. Now, there is some conspiracy going on that the African baobab population, as they are on multiple continents, is dying off because of climate change. So let's hear the opinion of the African plant hunter who has spent his entire life studying African plants and from whom I've also sourced the majority of the information for this video. There has been a bit of a story recently about old baobabs dying. Uh, prematurely because of climate change um, and I would just like to give my quick opinion on that. Baobabs are incredibly tolerant of drought and I don't think uh, that I could really say that I feel that baobab trees are dying because of changing climatic conditions in this part of the world. Uh, the trees that were in the study um, were all chosen because they were extremely old. And it's kind of like taking a bunch of 90 year old people and studying them for a year and then saying after the year, oh my goodness, some of them have died. Well, yes, but they were 90. That's why you chose them. So the trees that were chosen for this study, 15 different trees, were between 1,500 and 2,500 years old. They were studied over something like a 15 year period. And in that time, four or five of them died. To be honest, I don't think that's that surprising. And I personally have seen 
very, very, very many signs that the Beba population in Southern Africa is generally very strong and very healthy. Let me now reveal why I've been saying that it's a tree and it's another tree. Baobab is actually a succulent, same as these guys. That's why you won't hurt it when you peel off some of the bark since it's just fibers upon fibers upon fibers. And it's also the reason why the trunk is mostly hollow. The middle of the baobab tree has a soft spongy texture and most of the times it just dies off. So you are left with this cavity. After learning quite a bit about them, I view baobabs as a wonderful opportunity for the African rural areas to get their hands on some sustainable income. And there is even a company named Aduna that wants to make baobabs into a billion dollar industry. Thanks for watching.